Hello, my name is Katie Groves, and this is part 20 in my series about deprogramming from trauma-based mind control. If you've not done so already, I ask that you please watch the first two parts of this series, linked in the description below, for disclaimers and safety measures you can take while watching these videos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about tracking my blackouts. And what that means is paying attention to when I have lost time and if possible keeping a journal to record when I the host self have been present and when I've experienced time loss and then coming into contact with the parts that took over during the blackout figuring out what triggered us and why we disappeared and what the parts that took over did and gaining as much knowledge of what took place during the blackouts as possible. And this is not about recovering memories from prior to waking up from the cult that I will address in different videos, but this is about tracking my blackouts after starting my recovery process when I'm actively engaging with parts and learning to work with my systems. In the beginning, I experienced a lot of blackouts and time loss, and it was a struggle for me just to become aware that I had been blacking out. I discovered that I had a lot of programming designed to keep me from knowing that I had DID. And a big symptom of DID that causes people to recognize it and get help for it is time loss. So I had systems that were there to prevent me from knowing that I had lost time. And there were various mechanisms in the programming that achieved this. But I was able to start working through some of that programming and get help from alters in discovering when I had lost time. One of the things I found very difficult was trying to will the recall of memory. Just like I've not been able to practice mindfulness in my host parts without going to dissociative parts first, who hold awarenesses of things I am unaware of in my host. I have to do the same thing with memory. So I can't just recall things by myself. I have to go to parts that are in charge of the recollection of memory and in charge of the awarenesses around our blackouts. And I have to ask them to give me the memories that I seek. And a lot of this I don't have to do anymore in that I can remember things now because I've gained some continuity, but in the beginning I was so fragmented I had to do everything through parts. So learning to go to parts and ask for permission to find out what happened has been integral. I've also found that obsessing about time loss is very unhealthy for me. At first I was terrified of it, and while it still frightens me, the idea of losing time, it's a lot less scary now and I'm a lot less concerned with it because I don't feel like I'm being accessed. But in order to prevent accessing and become aware of when I was being used by cult members, I had to track my blackouts very carefully. I had to make sure that the people around me weren't intentionally triggering blackouts and that if I was consistently blacking out around certain people, I needed to look inside and make sure that that person wasn't programmed and triggering my programming in order to make that so. Nowadays I feel like my life is more of a constant brownout with periods of intense lucidity followed by periods of dissociation in which I'm somewhat co-conscious with parts and sometimes not so much. But learning to approach the whole notion of blackouts with calm and care for my parts, to not be quite so frightened, and also to recognize that I have DID, and even though I was programmed to be unaware of what was going on, even without the programming, I may still have multiple parts that cause blackouts. And that doesn't mean that I'm still being used. The presence of massive blackouts is not a um, positive sign in the direction of my healing, but it does not necessarily mean that I am being used. 
So learning not to panic about it, learning to keep an open mind and simply asking parts why the blackout happened. And oftentimes it's simply because trauma is triggered. I have post-traumatic stress disorder and DID that fueled the mind control programming that was intentionally created, but now I have these disorders that I have to live with, regardless of how they were installed in me. So knowing that PTSD can trigger the DID and that I can work with myself as a traumatized person, not just as a programmed person, helps a lot. And I don't know if that makes sense. But I guess what I'm trying to say is learning to differentiate the symptoms, recognizing that symptoms like blackouts were used by the cult, but are actually symptoms of my DID. So I don't have to fear them as much, and I don't have to view them as much as intrinsic to my programming. What else do I want to say about this? I had something else I was going to say, and now I don't remember what it was kind of ironic. One last thing I'll mention is that um, I really wanted to be able to remember everything when I was newer in my healing. And while I still want to gain as much memory and continuity as I can, I'm not in such a rush or a race to figure out everything that happened during the lost time because I'm not so desperate to control. Gaining back memory is healthy. Having less blackouts for me is healthy, but desperately seeking knowledge of lost time in order to be in control of my environment, in my mind, is not so healthy. So the attitude and intention with which I track my switches also not demanding that parts give me memories back when I find out I've blacked out, but just being respectful and calm as I can. Approaching parts with humility and letting them know that when they're ready to, my door is open for them to share with me what happened during the blackout. Okay, that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you for watching. Many blessings.